But kind of going along with Louis XVI, he, he was a nice man. He wasn't an overly dom dominating man. Uh, he liked uh, mechanical things. And one of his hobbies was to look at locks and keys and how they worked. And he liked engineering. He liked, those were very interesting to him. He liked to go hunting. That was a great deal of fun for him. But again, he, here he was kind of working in this absolutist system, but he didn't have the force of personality the way Louis XIV did to carry out that system. So he's already a little bit at a disadvantage here. However, he was, a very, much, he was very much a well-liked king. And he's, he, he is king during the Enlightenment. He is king during the American Revolution when ideas about different kinds of governments um, are being discussed. And because because uh, France helped out uh, uh, America during the American Revolution, there were many publications that uh, were able to escape the French censors. Now, usually, if, if someone had tried during the reign of Louis XIV to publish something saying, hey, wouldn't be having a republic as a kind of government kind of a good idea? Those would never have escaped the censors and never have been published. But under Louis XVI, if someone printed something about America and said, isn't it nice that America is a republic? What a wonderful form of government a republic is. That would escape the censors because it was something that was lauding an ally of France. And there's a, some important work done on that by a woman named Joyce Appleby uh, several years ago, talk, talking about how the American Revolution affected what the French were able to read. And so, of course, during the Enlightenment, uh, during this time of the American Revolution, the French are reading all kinds of really interesting ideas. And Louis XVI wants to posit himself within those ideas as a king of liberty. So he is a king, he is a monarch, but he wants to show his people that he is a liberating monarch. And the American Revolution is a wonderful way for him to show that. And he's presented um, in, the, in, in publications and in press as a very liberating figure. And I'll give you a couple examples of that. Um, this is one of my favorite sets of images ever. Um, these are both reliefs on the side of a, um, an obelisk, which is at uh, Port Vendre. And so these are, just, these are just kind of copies of those, of those um, reliefs. And the top one um, says, servitude abolished. And it shows Louis XVI standing um, at the, kind of at the back door of his fortress. And he is freeing uh, these serfs and granting them liberty. Now, by the 18th century in Western Europe, there weren't many serfs left. And a serf is, uh, is, is slightly um, worse off than a peasant, slightly better off than a slave. A serf is someone who is tied to the land. So a serf um, has to work the land that he was born on, and he cannot leave that land. Uh, and, and servitude, uh, serfs anyway, continued to, to uh, be very big and very important in Eastern Europe for a long time. But here, um, in this picture, it shows Louis XVI freeing his serfs. And all the serfs are kind of looking at him, supplicating to him, and they're holding up their hands to him. And Louis XVI, from his steps, is stepping down and putting his hand down to him, down to them as though it's like, I am the great monarch. I will liberate you serfs. And the serfs say, oh, please liberate us. Thank you very much. That, there's a certain kind of body language there. In the second image right beneath it, it shows a big ship, a big French ship, uh, sailing in the water towards what looks like a giant stone fortress. And outside the stone fortress are people who look very much like the serfs. They have the same body language. They're kind of kneeled down. Their hands are pointed upwards. They're saying, oh, please, oh, please, free us. And of course, there is someone who looks very much like Louis XVI, but probably was not Louis XVI, um, standing on the ship with his arms stretched out to them like, oh, yes, I will liberate you. Except this one is entitled The Freedom of America, The Independence of America. And here it says, on the coast of the city of Boston, the people of America assemble on the riverbank, holding out their hands to the frigate of the king that is bringing them a treaty that ensures their independence. So it kind of you see a parallel here, that just as the king frees his own serfs, so he is freeing the Americans. And this presents Louis XVI as a liberating monarch. He's not a monarch who enslaves. He's not a monarch who dominates. He's a monarch who liberates. And it's a very nice image. And you see this, ima this image all over the place. And I'm going to show you another example of it, which I really like. Um, and it also shows kind of a more up-to-date uh, picture of Louis XVI. Um, is that there's this wonderful image right here. And this, this kind of image was everywhere. And this is, again, a very symbolic uh, image. And again, we see palm trees. Uh, I mentioned that there were palm trees in northern Canada in the Seven Years' War lecture, and that did not mean that the French actually thought there were palm trees in northern Canada. But the presence of the palm tree indicated that they were in, in, um, in the Americas. So here you see palm trees again, because palm trees mean America in, in symbolic language. Um, and so you see the palm trees, and this is an um, Amerindian figure, or at least a very romantic, very, um, very uh, sentimental portrayal of an, of an Amerindian person with a feather headdress on. And it's holding a staff, and on top of the staff is the Cap of Liberty, which is going to become a very important symbol during the French Revolution. And he's stepping on the head of a lion. 
And next to this, this Amerindian figure, uh, you see kind of a, a base with three statues on it, a globe of the world full of fleur-de-lis and a rooster. Well, the rooster is the symbol of Paris. Obviously, there are, there, the, there's French symbolism in this beautiful blue ball. Um, and it's resting on top of Louis XVI, Franklin, and Washington. And the pedestal reads, uh, um, America and the seas, oh Louis, um, we thank you for our liberty which is very nice. Um, and again, and, and of course, Louis XVI is on top of Franklin and Washington. So he's kind of getting primary credit for freeing America. And this Amerindian figure over here who's holding the cap of liberty and standing on the lion, this is a symbol used very often to show that here America is dominating England. But America is only able to dominate England because it's leaning on the help of the French. And so here, Louis XVI is again uh, garnering all kinds of credit for freeing America. And he's again being presented as a monarch of liberty, which is again lovely.